Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about ECG in hypothyroidism. So what are the ECG changes we expect during hypothyroidism? That's what we are going to study today. So before going to the topic, we should know basically why. So what are the mechanism or what are the changes which occurs in the heart structure in hypothyroidism? That's why leading to ECG changes. So ECG changes may be secondary to mixed edematous deposits. <clears throat> so what happens is in during hypothyroidism, there is a lot of deposit of connective tissue which occurs within the myocardium. So because of this, what happens is that whenever there is a tissue deposit in the myocardium, if some cell or anything is getting deep polarized, so it's, it's uh, because of this connective tissue, it is not conducted or the electrical activity is going inside, is not conducted to its highest voltage or this is not conducted to the surface of the chest. So that's why it leads to actually low voltage ECG. And also there is a decreased activity of sympathetic nervous system. For sympathetic nervous system to work properly, you need a proper thyroid hormones. If your thyroid hormones are deficient, there will be uh, suppression of even the sympathetic nervous system. So thus, if your sympathetic nervous system is not functioning properly or it is slow, what will happen? It will lead to decrease in heart rate. So two changes which is commonly seen in patients of uh, hypothyroidism is that there is a low voltage ECG and then there will be bradycardia because of decreased activity of the sympathetic nervous system. Also, reduced levels of thyroxine has an indirect effect on the myocardium. It will thus lead to reduce inotropy. So what do you mean by inotropy? It means inotropy is nothing but there is a uh, decrease, there is a contraction of the heart. So there is reduced contraction of the heart. And what is chronotropy? There is reduced in decrease in heart rate. It's called chronotropy. <coughs> Next is triad of hypothyroidism in ECG. As we've already discussed, bradycardia, which is occurring due to decreased sympathetic system activity. Low QRS voltage is occurring basically of the gelatinous tissue, which is getting deposited in the myocardium. And the third thing which has been seen is there is widespread T wave inversions, usually without ST deviation that has been commonly seen. Next, other ECG changes is because hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism mainly for your body or anyone to function, you need a proper thyroid hormones. If your thyroid hormones are low, what will happen is everything will get slow. Your heart will get slow. So ECG changes, everything will get prolonged. So with the QT prolongation, there will be first degree AV block. There will be interventricular conduction delay. So everything will be prolonged in patients with hypothyroidism. So this is a classical ECG of a hypothyroidism, which you can see. You can see here one is QRS. The QRS denotes one heart contract. You can see after so much of gap, the other uh, beat is coming. So there is severe bradycardia here. Along with that, you can also see this fits into the criteria of low voltage ECG. So what we have said in low voltage ECG is, <coughs> if you want to know in detail, we have a video posted already on low voltage ECG, is that if your QRS amplitude is less than five millimeters in the limb bleeds. Limb bleed is nothing but this one, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. If this the size of this is less than five millimeters or one large square, then it fits into the low voltage ECG. So two and three here and AVF also completely fits in low voltage ECG. So there's low voltage ECG, there is bradycardia. So bradycardia and also followed by a STT inversions. You may con uh, confuse this with a deep pathological QA, so it looks similar to that, but you should also see severe bradycardia and all these things, you should suspect hypothyroidism. Now, one of the most uh, differential diagnosis is uh, pericardial effusion or tamponade, because what generally happens is that when you're in, you're doing an emergency duty or anywhere, so you ask for a ECG and you suddenly see a patient with a low voltage ECG, as you can see here also here, the amplitude of QRS is less than five small squares. You may see a low voltage ECG. So you may suspect the, what are the most common differential is generally is pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponade. So how will you differentiate that? So generally what happens in tamponade or massive pericardial effusion. So the heart is being compressed by the fluid. So that's why because of the fluid, there is low voltage ECG. Now, along with that, when there is compressing, the heart will try, heart will try to pump more blood by increasing its heart rate. So in pericardial effusion or tamponade, if there will be low voltage ECG and tachycardia. Whereas in hypothyroidism, there will be low voltage ECG and hypothyroidism, and low voltage ECG and bradycardia. So if heart rate is low with low voltage ECG, you should suspect hypothyroidism. If heart rate is more with low voltage ECG, you should suspect tamponade or pericardial effusion. Hope you have liked my video. If you have any doubts or any other queries, do post it in my comment box. 
uh, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg, for more interesting videos. Thank you.